Short-handed sailing for amateur sailors is something that has grown steadily over the years. Part of the inspiration for that has been the development of boats that have been aimed towards single or double-handed sailing. Boats like this, Junot's Sunfast 3200, and indeed her bigger sister, the 3600. Boats like the JPK 1010, then the 1080. They've all inspired people to head off short-handed. J-boats, and indeed their customers, are no strangers to short-handed sailing. The J105 was one of the most popular models and in fact inspired quite a lot of people to take the plunge and go and sail double-handed. But the J105's getting on for 20 years old now and a lot's changed in that time. The J111 was a very good starting point for a short-handed boat, but they've made some key differences. So what are they? Well, the most obvious is the 11S has a tiller instead of the wheel that used to run straight across the middle of the cockpit. It's got twin rudders as well, but it's also got more ballast in the keel and a slightly shorter rig. But the basic platform is definitely one that works well because it was already a very user-friendly cockpit. For the helmsman, everything's close to hand. Have the tiller, obviously, the fine-tuned main sheet, coarse-tuned main sheet, backstay control, and traveller controls, all very close to hand. Tacking is a relatively straightforward thing thanks to the fact that everything's pretty close to hand. I'm going to cheat a little bit and use the autopilot, but only for the last bit. Otherwise, it's very simple. It really isn't any more difficult than that. Helped by the autopilot because you can go forward and trim on the headsail, but that's it. But thanks to a smaller headsail and the control lines being that close to hand, it's pretty easy. Once you come forward, there's a few other details that you notice. The little bowsprit addition on this boat is an optional extra and designed to take code zeros or asymmetric sails. But one thing that you might not have been expecting from a short-handed boat is to find a spinnaker pole. But those that have been doing two-handed sailing for quite some time are starting to say that this is the way to go because it's easier to sail downwind. You've got more gears without having to jibe all the time. So it's interesting to see the spinnaker pole come back. The other change is that the headsail on the 11S is actually a little bit smaller than it is on the 111, and that just makes it easier to handle. And to be honest, you barely notice the difference in performance. So elsewhere around her deck layout, she's very much as you'd expect all the control lines are led back to the cockpit. She's got Genoa car pullers, tweakers, pretty much exactly where you'd expect them to be, which bodes well if you're going to race this boat fully crewed. But are there any drawbacks? Well, not many that I can find. I guess the only one that you'd really notice if you were going to do some close quarters racing with a full crew is that with the twin rudders, she's not quite as nimble as the single rudder version. Her turning circle is a little bit bigger and she's a little bit slower to go through. But that's about it. When it comes to her accommodation, there's not a huge amount to say. She's got a nice, modest galley on the port side, and she's got a decent sized navigation station on the starboard side with a proper chart table. In the main saloon area, she has a table with folding leaves settee berths, all pretty much as you'd expect. But up here in the forward cabin, there's a heads, 
and a sink and places to stow sails when you're not sailing. So the J11S is clearly aimed at competing against the Genoa, the JPK and others. But who's going to win out in the end? Well, it's a bit early to tell. But what we can figure out is that there's no lack of enthusiasm for shorthanded sailing.